Hey folks, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about Stephen King's Carrie. I'm going to get into my full in-depth review. I'm going to talk for a while. I am going to go right into spoilers and some, you know, questionable, not questionable thoughts, but ask questions and really get my little fingers deep into a book that I've been spending some time with. Listen to it. I crocheted stuff. I let myself get inspired both in fashion and creative arts. I did finish up this beret which by the way this is the top that i made before and it's obvious i messed up somewhere because it's like <laughs> really funky um but this one this one turned out how it's supposed to turn out so i don't know what happened with this one it's got a little jiggy vibe though i'm gonna be taking this one apart obviously but this is the finished beret and what it is supposed to look like with carrie burning down palm on the top did get inspired enough to make the handprint one as well but yes, I will eventually be releasing both of those as patterns, so just let I'll let you know when that is. You can follow my um, crochet Instagram down below in the comments, as well as my link tree to some other sites and stuff. If you want to check out my progress, it's slow going, but it's going, um, and I'm very proud of it, so please check that out. But yeah, this, I don't know what happened here. Letting myself really sit with the ideas in the book, letting myself be inspired take it all in, sit with it, and that is the kind of reading that I want to do, which results in this video where I'm able to talk at length about um, how a book has made me feel, let alone the 10 things that I'm going to rate it on. As for inspiration fashion-wise, this is a dress that I had made and sewed myself. I think it was appropriate for me to wear something that I made myself because Carrie does sew her own prom dress, and I think that's like really cool and impressive. Um, and so this is something that I made. This is made out of quite literal plastic and it's like a see-through shiny material. It reminded me very much of the movie tie-in where the prom is themed um, Love Under the Stars and it's very like blue and uh, there's a lot of like silver stars in the prom. I think it says prom night or prom whatever in like this silver lettering and stuff so that that was my inspiration for this let's get into the book review um as mentioned this will be full of spoilers so if you haven't read carrie or you know nothing about it go check out the book read it it's a quick one and come back and then watch this with me but if you're down for spoilers and hanging out and talking about stuff then uh let's get into it so to summarize the book it is about carrietta white um who is a teenage girl um who goes through her first menstruation but also has had past experiences with tk or telekinetic ability she's able to move things with her mind control things with her mind um and the events of this book take place in a very short period of time um which results in a catastrophic uh I want to say revenge plot, but a catastrophic event that results into the death of hundreds of people in the town that she's in. And there are a lot of really good characters, which I'll get into in that section, but that for the most part is Carrie. So the overall concept, which is thing number one, overall concept, I wrote originally on here, uniqueness, new thoughts, and fun. So is it something unique? Is it something new that I haven't experienced. And I think it's important to remember that this is Stephen King's debut novel, which I don't think a lot of people talk about. I, th I think with an author as prolific as he is now with like almost what, like 80 book catalog, it's hard to put yourself into a mindset of 1974. I think it was 74. Um, when this book came out to know that this is a debut, it's really interesting to go read the reviews of the book as a debut novel because it gives you like an entirely new perspective almost and reviewing the book for the book as opposed to now reviewing it as oh another Stephen King it's going to be five stars or we see it in like the Goodreads um awards or whatever it's like oh Stephen King is going to be in horror when the book is actually sci-fi because that's kind of what he was pigeoned into so like this overall concept wise as a debut novel is entirely impressive to me some of the notes i have for overall concept is it's impressive it's relatable a lot of the care i'll get into the characters but i think the characters in this book really shine but it is very relatable to a lot of people because of the characterization of the five main female characters and even the two other male characters is that you can see yourself somewhere whether it's in carrie or sue or hopefully not margaret but you can see yourself in a lot of these characters and it's 
relatable. Everyone has been a teenager. Everyone has experienced to some level either a bullying or being a bystander to bullying or um, wanting to step in and not knowing how. Um, peer pressure is another kind of thing in this too. Everyone's been some version of that and I think that that makes the entirety of Carrie relatable even though it is a supernatural, supernatural thing which is TK or telekinetic abilities. Which I have to say too, the telekinetic part of this book is something that I didn't really get the first couple times that I read it, which is the fact that Stephen King is kind of right on the money with this. I believe that this book was written before a lot have came out about uh, like MK Ultra and like government conspiracy cover-ups about how they're trying to control or like learn how people could potentially use their mind to control things and so the fact that he kind of tapped into this and in the book there is the government cover-up of it and how they're not informing the public of it what is it epistolary is that the right word um, elements of this book I find it really interesting that Stephen King picked up on that and wrote a book about it. So the concept itself, awesome. Overall concept, awesome. I think it'd be interesting to see more reviews at in the time period that it came out if people thought it was unique. If not in the telekinetic abilities, in the other things that it talks about, which really made me wonder like, is this a feminist novel? <laughs> and I know that's kind of deep, but the talks of menstruation, the five female main female characters, is a, a feminist novel. And I think that that's something that can be discussed even further in a further video and really break down. It's a really women heavy, pro women kind of book, but at the same time, the discussions of menstruation, does it elicit like menstruation equals evil menstruation equals bad she gets her first period and therefore taps into the powers or is it an empowering thing like you're coming into womanhood and then you get like and and that's kind of <laughs> something that you can discuss too right i think the book itself is simple and easy to read but there's a lot of more complex themes so i think the overall concept teenage girl bullied gets powers is um quite impressive so i am going to give it I'm gonna give it a nine. I think that the only reason I'm not giving it a 10 for the overall concept is because I feel like I want more. And I know that there's other books in Stephen King's later library that give you more of the sort of telekinetic stuff, but I want more. But I think the fact that he took so many different elements and put it in, quite impressive. Second thing is plot. Is it easy to follow? Is there a good arc, a climax, an ending, or any plot holes? Um, I think that the plot for this is also really well done because it is a very short period of time. It kind of gives you what you need from it. Very early on in the book you are getting news articles and reports and I can't think of the word. Um, articles added in and media added in um, after the major event of prom night that lets you know that this is what's coming up. So there's really a good amount of foreshadowing in the plot, which allows you to read the plot. And you know, you're not even introduced to Curie's own word, I think like until maybe like 40 pages into the book, something like that. And so what you're getting is other people's perspectives and then you're getting in her internal thought and you kind of know where it's going the whole time. You find out through reading the articles like, and Mrs. White was dead. And you're like, okay, well, now that I know that, how is that gonna happen? And so the plot is laid out for you really well. Um, and then as you're even leading up to what you know is gonna be a catastrophic event at prom, it doesn't spoil it for you in the book. Even, you know, the scenes in the major climax, which is, you know, the gym and locking people in there, burning it down, it's violent, it's violent, it's graphic she's very revengeful she's very coming into that major peak before the fall at the end and even that the build-up for it is really good so that i think is a symbol of a good plot the ending stephen king has an issue with endings and i'm not trying to relate it to other books that i've read that's what i'm trying not to do along this process is go oh well there's other books but this one has a good ending this one wraps up i think that terry's final fight with her mother and getting injured and 
tearing through town bringing the people to her and everyone knows about Carrie in the end Sue coming to her and Sue getting I think it like Sue gets the library or like of her images and and Carrie sees Sue's library which is one of the most beautiful passages in the book is when like she's kind of going through um Sue's internal thoughts I love that it is a good ending and then even further the themes carried through the book menstruation power the the images of blood that's another thing the images of blood the final moment with sue at the end is a solid ending even further than the characters is the final passage in the book or the final note where they're implying that um the tk gene the telekinetic gene in females there is going to be further cases of that that in itself is a good ending because you go ooh, like it's that final hook of like ah like gotcha like and that that i really liked so plot i didn't think there was any plot holes there's nothing really left <laughs> unsaid everybody has its their own like ending boom 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 everything's tied up there's nothing that made me go like oh i wonder what happened to that character you kind of know and I don't know, I think it's well done. So I am going to give the general plot a 10 out of 10. Number three is characters. Characters in this book, I'm gonna let you know right ahead of time, 10 out of 10. I wrote here, are they fleshed out? Is there growth and downfall? I think that this is really impressive because Stephen King has five unique and strong and individual female characters. So obviously you have Carrie, duh. And you're getting carry through other people's description of her which in a way is kind of unfair um you getting people theorizing on what happened to her life like whether it be the neighbors looking in as a child you're getting the interviews of people after you're getting sue's perspective um other people theorizing on how she dealt with tk like the telekinetic stuff and then finally you're getting carrie's like inner monologue and What's really interesting is that the the initial scene in the shower where she's so innocent and she's so repressed and she doesn't know what's going on is so heartbreaking. And then immediately in the same day, because that happens, she gets sent to the principal's office, she goes home. And even in the walk home, you're starting to see the strength that she's getting from that moment come into power and her discovering her power and training it over the course of the book, which is something that like, I don't know why that's something I always forget in the book is that like she does train, like she's, uh, as the book progresses, she's moving things up and down. She's moving a bed up and down. She's slamming the door like, no, you can't come in. No, you can't hurt me anymore. She's building up this sense of power, right? So even in her innocence and in her not wanting to get tricked in her trying to be a little bit more free from the repression in that household, um, she's coming into her own. That that in itself is so impactful as a character and, and relatable in some way, right? Like I I think that Carrie's character arc is I don't know, something special, in my personal opinion. And it's it's quite sad to read as you know the night like when she goes to prom there's there's hope there she doesn't want there to be hope but there's a tiny bit of hope that she has and like she's enjoys herself and tells her mother like you know they do think i'm funny mama like and and she cracks some jokes and she has like a moment <laughs> just a tiny moment of of hope as a character before you know things explode and it's just the it's not fair like it's <laughs> i don't know it's just really it's really sad to read i think as a character you know i think there's a lot of discussions like is carrie a villain is carrie like as evil villain as you think like we think of horror icons and like carrie's up there but i'm like yeah she made a choice but i think it would be really interesting um discussion to be like the trial of Carrie White. 
like what would she be tried for in this because I don't know it, it, it's a complex there's complexity there to her character other character Margaret White um, her mother is a is a is an issue <laughs> um, no but she's written very extreme religious religious fanatic but then also so much trauma in that herself and there's a fine line in there where you have to acknowledge that yes she is a woman who has trauma but some of the things that she's describing you go is it her own extreme religious fanaticism that makes the trauma of an event that much worse in her mind i think that Margaret White is a character who I, you very briefly wonder if there is any good and then you realize no because there's so many descriptions in here of her at, at one point it literally says throttling Carrie like the um the abuse and just terror that this woman brings upon her daughter is hard to read <laughs> is aggressive to read um and it's sad sad to read she she just is relenting or unrelenting in her um control and power and it hurts and i think that one of the one of the quotes that i liked in the book but it really really lets you kind of know how bad it is is that yes carrie is getting bullied in school and yes she doesn't trust anyone there and she doesn't like it there obviously um but she even said at one point at least at home i know what's going to happen <laughs> even though it's shit and horrible um at school i don't yeah i think margaret is an interesting character all around and i almost want to look more read more just in the descriptions of her and what she has to say because even her family members are in agreement that's like she's so far gone in like the religious thing um and there's also discussions of her younger in school where she was a terror like she was just always sort of that like into the the extreme is the, the extreme religious tones and it's really interesting because i i grew up pentecostal christian by the way and i fought against that and it's fucking weird i experienced some like weird shit i'm in therapy for it so like you know reading this book i knew would like touch a chord and it did with certain things but it was the fact that even in her religious extremism it's like her own it's like her own combination of almost like catholicism and there's some like lovecraftian kind of horror in there too um and it's just it seems almost like so over here religious extremism some more like snake charming pentecostals <laughs> That I'm familiar with and then there's this like which is you know um Margaret White which is like she's just I don't know she's just spewing her own brand of hatred and justification for her actions and her thoughts and what she thinks is immoral and nasty and it it really makes you wonder if she believes all of this stuff because she is an adult in the sense that she knows what has happened like she knows that she had carrie she knows that she's pregnant and it's just like there's a lot of underlying guilt it's the and and it's never really explained like why she feels so much um hatred towards i say hatred but almost like scared hatred of men of sexuality of womanhood of all of these things and you can you can look at it as mental health obviously at no point do you get like a break into her being decent because even as Carrie is dealing with the abuse from her she plays into this like manipulative like self-harming aspect to get Carrie to come to her and I ooh something about that shit fucking mm. I, it, it really just bugged me it, it made me think like oh no this woman is obviously extreme obviously mentally ill but also i hate throwing the word around a fucking narcissist and just evil and like evil as as 
in an entirety yeah so in terms of a character yeah that's a character and the villain of the novel and i think that that needs to be more portrayed even though carrie does end up you know killing a lot of people <laughs> the other strong female character in this is sue sue snell sue probably is the most interesting to me aside from carrie because sue has this like beautifully written internal dialogue of self-discovery um and there's a discussion when they're she's having relations with tommy and she's discussing like her feelings towards like what her life will look like if she continues on this and she's just doing this like so well written inner monologue <laughs> um growth like I, I don't know how else to describe it and she does it a couple times where like she's she's really the voice in the book that is the one that is introspecting the most other people are but sue's introspection is what pushes any form of goodness forward in the book because otherwise it would be just horrific if it was every single person ganging up on carrie it would just be like really really depressing and even you know sue pulling back and being like i participated in the bullying but now i feel bad i'm going to rectify my feelings by getting tommy to take her to the prom but am i doing it for the wrong reason yes or no are people's perception of me doing it for the for good um you know she she waffles too which is like i i would do anything to get to my senior prom i want to go more than anything but she's willing to give it up which makes you question her character and she questions her own character i think it's i think it's really beautiful and then you know carrie finding out sue's kind of pure intentions in the end but sue even being flawed and thinking that like what if tommy falls in love with carrie like there's there's an ounce of that jealousy still there even as you're seeing sue's character progress there's an ounce of jealousy there that's like will he like carrie will you know will he i don't want to say cheat on her but like you know what what is her thoughts even as she's you know letting this moment happen to try to make herself feel better really interesting and then you know like her standing her ground in some of the final interviews being like well what do you think like you know people being like well did did how did you know that carrie was calling um people to to her and she's like well what do you think <laughs> you know and like her fighting back against the um i guess it's like a court kind of thing or interviewer being like well duh go look at everyone else's interviews like what do you like what do you mean you think that this is what's happening here she kind of really holds her ground with like a lot of her um decision making even though she's asking questions of herself and i love that because it's it's not she's not one note she's has complexity to her and i think that that's really what makes sue probably the best i say the best written character in the book but pretty much the best written character in the book and i love it i, I like her a lot and i think that sue's character needs to be more in focus in a lot of the adaptations um because i find it really interesting fourth strong female character that's i can't believe i'm only on like thing one this is gonna be the longest video but the fourth strong character is chris or christine um which is interesting how that name pops up later on in his book it's chris and chris is you know the 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 mean girl and it's interesting because i would be very curious to know where other mean girls in literature popped up because she is she's a mean girl but she's not like the most popular girl she's very one note but there's a little bit of growth um she's just a rich always had things her way mean <laughs> like she's just mean she's just cruel and you wonder why and it's just she's rich and bored and like i think even that being her character is really interesting because later on in the scenes with um in the th scenes with billy she's like you know i got my white sweater and my skirt and he's driving me in his fast car and it's so much more exciting than the boring jocks that i'm used to and like she gets grease on her sweater and it's like get me dirty like i like this now and i like excited by billy and billy's an ass like obviously <laughs> but the desire to be kind of bad and like 
this is something exciting is pulling her forward to doing these acts even though she is complex in the knowing that she has that power over Billy knowing that she has her sort of like female sexuality over him is really interesting and I find that the parallels between Margaret and uh, Chris are really interesting because Margaret goes on and on about like men will take you and like take you to a roadhouse and like whiskey broth and be nasty and all of that stuff and then Chris is like take me to the roadhouse I want to be nasty right so like it's almost like Margaret's worst fear of what can happen when women tie into sexuality is Chris <laughs> and then Chris ends up being I mean, you can ask yourself, like, is Chris also the villain of the book? Like, she's the one that's, like, really making the decisions for it about the blood, which is the moment. But I think if it wasn't her, it would have been someone else in there. Or Billy himself. Like, it's just, it's kind of messy. A stereotype, yes. <laughs> but there's more to it. It's not just, like, mean girl. Sue's not just bystander. Margaret's not just mean mom. Carrie's not just, you know, main character like there's more to each person which is why the character writing is top notch and then the last female character that really stood out was obviously the teacher like miss desjardins which like she's a young teacher it's her first year teaching she's teaching these girls and she is i feel in my mind so close to the ages of them that she has that first year teacher thing where it's like is she relating like seeing herself in all of these things and it's like where was she placed in high school was she more a Carrie was she more a Sue was she more of a of a Chris um and I think that her character stands strong because she's trying to be impartial but she can't because she has this like point of authority right and she punishes she punishes the girls being mean yeah and she you know does some like she calls them shitty she throws one of them against a locker like i think that shows in her youth and i think that that's really interesting is trying her best for carrie but also getting frustrated with her because she's like oh i wish i could just slap the girl like how what do you mean she doesn't know like i have to deal with this now like and it's a little bit of that comes across too um she's an interesting character i don't think she's as complex as obviously the other four but I think her her involvement with everything is interesting quickly the two boy characters Tommy pure soul I hate to say Tommy is pretty much just like a pure they needed to have one person that had decent intentions and Tommy just reads so like yep I'm willing to do this and like genuinely nice um there's a little bit of weirdness in how he describes Carrie kind of as an object it was like her li like those lips like her her nose or whatever like it's kind of weird but she you know he takes the time to kind of describe her um as a person <laughs> and i and i think that like you know he gets to kind of know her as like somebody who has fun and he gives her or a, i don't want to say gives her a space to have fun but like provides the safe space to have fun for like what feels like 10 minutes before shit goes down you know he says like he has these expectations almost of how things should go because he's like do you want to dance and she's kind of you know doesn't want to tell him like i don't know how to dance and he's like oh it's okay i'm not really that good at dancing either do you want to just walk around and talk to people and she's like yeah okay so i don't know man tommy's just <laughs> tommy's just pure and i think what happens to him is just kind of sad but then also there needed to be that kind of person that just is innocent in all of the destruction and that's tommy and then billy is written as such a bad guy like through and through bad guy yes he has his own issues where he's you know he's personally getting um abused at home or doesn't want to deal with his i think it's stepdad and then he takes it out but then he takes it out in a way that is driving his car fast and killing dogs <laughs> like what you know he's the one that's like pig blood for a pig like it's so mean when he says that and so um 
just blah. and like i think it's really interesting that like that's one of stephen king's first like kind of greaser characters because those kind of characters come back but one thing i do find interesting about billy is in his description of the car it's like the car gives him power it's what's driving him he feels like electrified by the power of the car which so reminds me of christine and i think that like maybe stephen king just like liked how much the sort of visual of billy like just driving this car being like almost like the car is his power which gets carried on into other novels so it's interesting because i don't think that carrie as a book is mentioned that many times in the stephen king universe or that there's that many tie-ins but you can see further books being influenced by it so I think that's cool. Um, but yeah, that is my long-winded explanation of the characters. I think that all the characters are fleshed out. There's growth, there's downfalls in all of them, there's complexity in all of them, and I think that character-wise, 10 out of 10. Number four is complexity. Did I miss anything in the novel or feel dumb? Not this time. If anything, I feel like I've learned more about the complexity of the characters. I spent more time with them. I listened to the audiobook slowly. I was able to get the complexity of all of the individual characters but then also the time frame and then also the government aftermath aspect of it which as a whole i always kind of just whoop, kind of like oh yeah they're writing about how carrie burned down prom like you know but really what they're doing is they're talking about like the genetics like they're talking like the g and it's fake like obviously it's fake and stephen king just made this shit up which is why it is impressive to me because <laughs> it reads so real you're like oh yeah like the tk gene like oh yeah okay like i got and like at no point was i reading it almost thinking like oh this isn't something that exists which is impressive like and so i think that it's maybe not complex in its format like how it lays it all like the plot and how it lays it all out for you but it's complex in in the details complexity did i miss anything or feel dumb no but i learned more about the complexity so i think overall i think a complexity i don't know what i should rate that on then is it complex or did i understand it the complexity i understood more of the complexity this time so i think i'm going to give it maybe a nine out of ten was there anything that made me feel dumb no, honestly, complexity, 10 out of 10. That's what I'm going to do because I, I understood it and it was fun. Number five is thought provoking. Did it make me think after? Yeah, <laughs> clearly. It made me think a lot. It made me think about how were there any people like Carrie that I affected <laughs> in my youth? Yeah. Was I a bully at times? Yeah. Was I sue in, in at times? Yeah. Was I Carrie at times? Yeah. Like you know thought provoking in the treatment of her and like oh i wish i had <laughs> who doesn't wish they had powers maybe not to the level of destruction but like who doesn't wish they could like quote unquote take revenge people that wrong them or made them feel lesser than obviously but just thought provoking in the deeper themes of the novel that i didn't grasp i think the first couple times that i read it and honestly makes me excited to then read it more. I think that this audiobook really nailed it. I think that like if you're looking to reread Carrie and you have it, read the Sissy Spacek or listen to the Sissy Spacek audiobook while physically reading it. Because even physically reading it, as you're getting some of the like inner dialogue moments where like Sue kind of breaks the fourth wall at points, you wonder as a reader how it's going to be done in an audiobook and she fucking nails it. And Sissy Spacek's like accent too, like I can't do it, but like the accent suits it, it's great. And it in my mind, that is Carrie, right? Based on like the... I'm put in here modern modern day import importance but like that is the voice of Carrie to me so like it's just really good and I can see myself going back and listening to that audiobook over and over again but yeah thought provoking yeah it made me think after and I think that it's going to continue to make me think after um so in that regard I am going to give it I'm going to give it a nine personally because I think that that one thing that's missing is it hurts to think about it. <laughs> it's not like thought provoking in like a grand life changing, I'm going to change everything about my being way necessarily. Obviously, I'm not going to be an asshole to people, but it's, I don't want to think about a certain aspect of it, which is the kind of trauma 
aspect of it so i'm gonna give it a nine overall writing good quotes anything that caught me by surprise yeah the overall writing is is pretty great although i think i'm gonna give it an eight and here's why there is one moment in here that distracted me where margaret is talking about how carrie's dad she mentioned that he died but then another point she mentions like he's kind of <laughs> forget exactly what it was like in carrie's youth like i thought he was already dead but then he she mentions him in a very real still alive way and i don't know if i just misread that or if that was like a weird cut and then the overall writing too which i find i'm gonna cut to an eight is the fact that stephen king wrote all of carrie without the additions of um the journals and the tk elements and it was too short and then he added in the other elements and it doesn't feel chunked out like that like clunky necessarily but there's a couple of hard breaks in there that like it kind of just <laughs> oh okay we're back to this oh, okay we're back to this and so while i like how it pulled the plot along it's a little a little bit jagged and in a way you can almost tell how like it was in a i want to say an afterthought because it's pretty flushed out and for the whole story but knowing that it was an afterthought it can read like an afterthought um there's in terms of quotes there's one that i wrote down which is um saying sorry i think it was i forget the context but it was like sorry is the kool-aid of human emotions it's what you say when you spill a cup of coffee or throw a gutter ball when you're bowling with the girls in the league true sorrow is as rare as true love um i think that's sue but that is just like you know saying sorry has depth <laughs> you can't just be like oh sorry for your trauma <laughs> like you need to feel that sorry um which is so true and then like i said the whole scene with sue and tommy where she's doing this like self-reflection and then chris's self-reflection when she's basically talking about billy and then going like i'm gonna go pleasure myself after you know like <laughs> talks about that um yeah there's there's some quotes in there that stand true but nothing necessarily that i'm like super drawn to that i'm like oh i need to write this down or i'm gonna adapt this into my day-to-day -day life you know for all writing i'm happy leaving it at an eight seven is entertainment value was i bored was it fun was it a fast read uh it is fast it is tremendously fast i could have sat down for like a full but I think the audiobook's like eight hours and listen to the entire thing. Um, I will go back and re and re-listen to it. Um, I think audiobook was the way to go. Physically read it, I don't know, but I like I like the audiobook enough that I want to experience that again. Um, so the entertainment value was there. There were definitely moments listening to it though, where someone else is describing like the atrocities of the way that Margaret White talks at Carrie or to Carrie. That was like jarring like honestly it was like Whoa. and then some of the some of the depictions of violence as well that carrie inflicts is like oh my god okay and another thing i will mention in stephen king's work is the use of racist stuff i don't even like saying stuff like that right because it's not like the main focus of the book but it's important to bring that up and he does insert it in to some like very much like this is a bad guy who uses stuff like uses language like this this is a bad guy who thinks things like this which is an issue in itself but then also there's one line it's not a bad guy i think it was tommy actually description of carrie's lips as being full and like you know and even that i was like okay that felt like stephen king's opinion you know like that wasn't tommy being a bad guy to be bad so therefore i'm gonna use you know bad language it was like huh like and so that took me out for the entertainment value because i was like what the fuck but overall entertainment value 9.5 except that part <laughs> i did not find that entertaining to be clear eight is modern day important modern day importance and cultural relevance i think that this one is quite obvious that the modern day importance of carrie shines through and the fact that you're almost what 50 years past the movie and people are like people know what carrie is 
you know, it's it's held. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. It's held that much um, cultural significance for that long. People know even without reading the book what Carrie is about and they knew weirdly enough when the book was released because I ended up reading like I said some of the original reviews from the 1970s and it was like if you didn't know what Carrie is about you knew very soon a couple years after when the movie was out right so like even if you didn't watch the movie you probably heard like Okay, say you've never, this is an example, say you've never watched Beetlejuice. Oh, you kind of know what a, what Beetlejuice is about, right? Like, you know it's about, oh, it's undead guy, woo. If you've never seen Mission Impossible, you know, you know, oh, it's Tom Cruise action movie. Like, I feel like Carrie got labeled as that. It's like, oh, if you've never seen Carrie, it's like teenage girl burned down prom. Or it'd be like teenage girl menstrual blood burned down prom. Like, those, those three things that boom, boom, boom. And so I feel like the modern day importance um cultural relevance is the fact that even if you haven't read the book and someone doesn't know the source material in and out like people who do fucking hour-long videos like i do about it you still know enough to be like oh yeah carrie even if you haven't read it haven't seen it and i think that that's important the fact that there's still movies getting made there's still media getting made the fact that you can go online and there's still merch the, the fact that i get an email from you know a fashion website that I follow that's like the carry collection still I'm making new merch I you know I'm seeing <laughs> I'm seeing you know people get tattoos still to this day inspired by the movie or people are still dressing up for Halloween as carry that kind of modern day importance is huge and I think that's really cool I just think it's cool I think it's neat I like seeing all of the the timeline of this thing exists like it didn't exist and then boom it existed and it's forever existed in my life still like there's never been a moment in my life where carrie didn't exist does that make sense and i would love to talk to somebody who was like maybe in their 20s or something back when the movie was released to be to understand how that came to be or how it was received then because you got to think about it i think it was like carrie was released around the same time as the exorcist and around the same time as don't quote me either the omen or rosemary's baby i forget that third one but they all took place in a pretty close chunk of time in the 70s and all of them have that very religious undertone right overtone whatever they all have that religious aspect as religion scary <laughs> which is its own thing to be discussed at the time as to why um why were people discussing that it was the separation between you know the young people at the time not wanting to wanting to separate from that which in a way makes you wonder if carrie is or was at the time like a not just like a coming of age story, but a, um, what did I write down? I wrote down something. A cautionary tale, that's what I was thinking, was like, is Carrie being repressed, religious like that, and being so sheltered and shut in a cautionary tale? Like you need to let your teenagers go and be their own people, even if it's for one night at prom, so that that prom night doesn't happen to them. <laughs> And because Margaret Wright is written so extreme and so violent and so brutal that this is what can happen, make sure you don't let that happen, right? So it kind of feels interesting in terms of cultural relevance, like is Carrie at the time and even now a cautionary tale? Um, so yeah, modern day importance, 10 out of 10. Um, Rereadability, do I want to experience this again? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. I would listen to this again. Um, I think I would make it a book that I do listen to again. Maybe not right away, but definitely for like a short thing that I want to do. Do I want to reread it? Yeah. To me, it is just a little bit too sad <laughs> and a little bit too um, intense for certain moods. Like I think I have to be in the mood to be like, okay, I'm going to listen to Carrie and it's going to bum me out in certain, spart in certain parts, but it is impressive as a Stephen King novel. And I get inspired by this, that, and the other. So let me enjoy it that way. But it's not like a, I'm going to listen to this and I'm going to skip down the road. <laughs> like, so rereadability, I'm going to give it a, 
I'm gonna give it an eight because I would go back to it for sure. An inspiration, number 10. Was I inspired creatively by this? Yes, in so many ways. Fashion, the fashion, the movies, the inspired by the movies, absolutely. Um, there's a lot of really strong imagery in Curry. There's a lot of themes like the blood for sure image right boom inspiration um taking inspiration from the already existing media that you know is so iconic like the original movie my inspiration um came from really being kind of mystified that stephen king as a pretty young man was able to write such fully fleshed out female characters and so many of them too which I found to be impressive. And I know he talked about how like he used um, women in his um, in his life that he knew as inspiration to write those characters and talk to his wife about it. But really, it's pretty impressive that he was able to write that much inner monologue. And I think that that's something that this is okay i'm gonna go sidebar, but just hear me out. I think that was something that was discussed with John Green when looking for Alaska came out was like oh how can this you know male author in his 30s write a teenage girl this well and it's like well I mean they they witness <laughs> they witness females they witness stuff and it's hard to think like oh how can you get into the mind of you know a gender that you don't know and also describe menstruation pretty well and also describe the complexities of female teenagehood dumb in high school yet he nails it on the head but I think what a lot of people maybe don't know or forget is that Stephen King was a teacher and hearing that and then reading Carrie is going okay that makes sense you're seeing these little like environments like little bubbles of relationships and and stuff like that which is so interesting because i've had conversations with teachers who taught me in high school years later and i'm like how like how did you perceive me because i i need to know and like they kind of told me they're like oh you were funny in this this regard or like you know i can remember when you were so involved in that one relationship with that guy in high school like that was all i could see you being was like you know you were so in that you're getting a teacher's glimpse too um and his own personal just heart into seeing bullying both as you know he he describes in the beginning of the book which i think everyone needs to read if you're interested um in carrie is him writing like his inspiration for the book but you know he he uses references of the girls that he couldn't save um which is oh that's gonna make me cry but like the girls that he couldn't save and he's like i wish that you know i wrote this novel in hopes that if they could have lived long enough to have daughters that it would have been their daughters reading it or them reading it and I think that really comes through is, is there's a level of care there um that he wrote into this book to make sure that he quote unquote did it right it didn't feel like it was not well researched or rushed or just oh, I'm gonna write a female character just to write a female character it felt very put together but yeah the inspiration I think the inspiration at least from Carrie for me um run strong i i just i i have so many outfits that i could like make inspired by like one thing that's mentioned or like margaret's description or like carrie's description and like i like i said i i have patterns in my basement that like carrie would have been looking at in the 17 magazines i went so far as to like look at some of them and maybe maybe i'll bring that up in another video maybe i'll do like one more video um at some point where I like compile all of the things outfit wise that inspired me by Carrie let me know if you'd like that because I definitely can do it I think the inspiration is also a 10 out of 10 I didn't end up tracking how I rated this <laughs> throughout this video I'm an idiot I kind of just said it and I didn't track it um oh dear why didn't I write it down I'm okay this is this is real time I need to remember what I said Mm -hmm. I wrote down one. I wrote down overall concept. Um, plot. Plot, I think I gave also a 10 out of 10, right? Characters were definitely a 10 out of 10. Um, complexity, I think I ended up giving that... Did I give that an 8? 
an eight out of 10. Um, thought provoking, and that I think I gave that a nine because there was at least one I didn't want to have to think about. Um, overall writing, I'm giving an eight because there's a little bit of draggedness. Um, entertainment value, I believe I gave that also a 10. Modern day importance, I'm also giving a 10. Rereadability, I want to give an 8. And then inspiration, I was very inspired, so also a 10. So let me add that up real quick. So I took a second and added everything up. And so it ends up being a 92 out of 100 for Carrie, which honestly, that seems pretty valid. Like, I wondered when I was going into this, I'm like, am I just throwing numbers into the air? Maybe. And maybe I'll change it as I go back and I read future books. But for now, I think that 92 out of 100 feels really good for Carrie because it is such a strong first novel. There's not a lot that I have to really, like, critique it on. It's short, it's readable, it's rereadable. Hold strong today. And I think that's really important. So 92 out of 100. And I think that it is important to mention um, at the end of this video is uh, the Stephen King bird watch. Um, birds were mentioned 18 times in this novel. Okay. So we'll see how it goes in future novels. But I think that mentioning boobs, tits, and breast in a... Uh, how long is the book? <laughs> 242 page book at least this edition mentioning those things that many times is honestly impressive <laughs> and kind of like huh and as i was like crocheting my stuff th th like i obviously have it in uh what's it called time lapse but there were moments where i was like again and i put stuff down i'm like again <laughs> another one like it was just kind of wild i think the most interesting description of the female anatomy uh was dirty pillows and i mean really that alone you want to talk about um a classic thing if you know stephen king and you know carrie dirty pillows is up there in <laughs> in iconic uh descriptive language of of rust even though there is some pretty iconic stuff coming in stephen king's uh language um i think there's i think it was rose matter if i'm remembering right there is a pretty iconic description that being said um 92 out of 100 for carrie i hope that um you all enjoyed going along on this lengthy discussion with me um let me know in the comments down below is there anything that i missed that you want to discuss further for this novel is there anything that i said that is dinging in your brain is like oh that's a talking point or oh i haven't thought of that um let me know because i think i could literally discuss this novel at length like with like people for hours probably <laughs> um just because it's it's that interesting and like the the characters are that cool but at the same time i am excited to allow myself to be inspired by carrie and then now move on right like i've let it course through me unless of course you do want a whole fashion video let me know because i can do it i think it would be really fun the next book is salem's lot so we're getting into vampires which oh i'm so excited um i can remember reading salem's lot and liking it i th i don't know if i rated it higher than carrie I don't know but i'm gonna listen to an audiobook this time as well uh, which may be the first time i'm doing that so fingers crossed that i enjoy it because i think it's gonna be cool um but yeah that is all i have to say for today let me know did you like carrie as much as i did and thank you for watching all the way to the end if you watched all the way to the end uh i don't know leave like a fire emoji or something if, if there even is one um in the comments that would be really awesome and um thank you for your support and as always if you are interested in my crochet patterns or anything that i'm doing with that there is a link tree in my description that'll take you to my crochet instagram please follow if you're interested i would love to see that grow naturally from people that are curious um, and i will have patterns up soon as i can uh, and i'm working on those always so um thank you for being here and i appreciate and i will talk to all of you soon bye